Hey guys, welcome to the latest episode of Rugby Rumblings. Uh, it's a 2-0 test victory for uh, Sia Kodisi's side and Rossi Erasmus. They've won the test series against England. All is well in the Springbok rugby again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> once again, they came back from behind, had a bad start and came back and won. So I think they should be applauded for that. Uh, a lot of good in that test. A lot of stuff still to work on. I suppose that's a good thing as well. But well done, Rossi and them. Okay, so let's start off. Uh, I think the Test Series is the first thing. Obviously, there's a lot of good things that have happened in that Test Series. And the fact that they won is, is an excellent thing. Remember, this was an England side that was coming out to win 3-0 to win their first series in South Africa. And they've fallen apart in disarray. They're having a, a tough time of it. But from Springbok point of view, it's been great. It's a great two tests. They're not the finished article yet, guys. They're not close to it yet. And they've still got a lot to work for. So... I agree with Rossi when he says that, that they're not close to the All Blacks. And I think we should all take note of that. Remember last year, the Springboks were un unbeaten until September when they came up against uh, the All Blacks and they lost 57-0 and how quickly things changed after that. So just remember that. I think that's, that's what comes down, it comes down to at the end of the day, is how we perform against the All Blacks. A lot of the public will, 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 will agree with that and they will think that it's, that's the only thing that really matters in Springbok rugby. And... and yeah, unfortunately, you have to build for the World Cup. If we're going to be better next season, I agree with Rossi. We have to be brave. We have to make choices. And it's not going to be an easy road, but I think we should be happy that we won the series. That's the first thing. And celebrate the victory for what it is, a first step. Of course, one of the big things on the weekend was Beast uh, Tendai Matawarira getting his 100th cap. What a milestone, what a guy, and really one of my favorite players out there as well. Well done, Tendai, and, and I think uh, the way his team had celebrated. Have a look at this clip from Opa Mohodje's Instagram feed that tells you exactly how the guy celebrated after he was given his golden cap and he was uh, uh, praised by his teammates. <laughs> Okay, let's get to England. Eddie Jones is under pressure. He's under a lot of pressure. He's lost five five games in a row. There are people calling for his head already. He doesn't have the full support of his own board, and his players aren't really happy. We all saw this this uh, incident on on social media on the weekend. Ben Youngs, after seven seconds of a Sky News interview, walking away. Have a watch. Well, Ben, it seems like it's a bad case of deja vu for England again, doesn't it? Yeah, look, we're really disappointed. Uh, we lost the series. We're glad about that. So we'll work hard this week, and we'll look forward to getting it right next week. Cheers. Well, that was short, wasn't it? And while the sound might not be great on that, I think the intent is clear. He didn't want to do the interview. To his credit, he came back later and he apologised for that. So you've got to give him credit, I suppose, for that. Uh, he, did, uh, he was obviously frustrated. Still, not a good thing to have happened. Media uh, activities are... are part and parcel of the game nowadays and you should know how to do them as well. Having said that, other stories came out. We heard about Joe Marler and and uh, and Mike Mike Brown both having a go at a fan and swearing at a fan. There were stories about players refusing selfies in the hotel and the players jumping a reception queue to get a, for an emergency which turned out to be an adapter for their cell phone. So you, the point I'm trying to make here is that all these stories usually stay hidden if a team's winning. Because they're losing, all these stories will pile on the pressure for Eddie. Uh, even though it is going to pile on the pressure for Eddie, the one thing I think he, he needs to do is he needs to get still the big picture. And England need to remember the big picture. The big picture is the World Cup next year. He's been given the task to take them through to that. And whether you should fire a coach a year, a year before the World Cup, I don't know. We do it quite regularly normally. But... Uh, uh, yeah, I feel for England because everything was going so well and they just need to get themselves out of this dip. Obviously, I hope it's not this week again in Cape Town against the box, but I think uh, they need to find something to lift them out of this dip. In other rugby news, there was a great win for Ireland against Australia. Uh, and as this tunnel cam video released by Irish Rugby shows, a really great day for them. And uh, they've done well. 1-1, one, one, that series is going down to the wire. That should be quite interesting. Of course, the series down in New Zealand is already a done contest, but one filled with controversy. I'm not going to get into that just here, though. There will be a separate video. Click on the site for it where I'll be addressing those red card incidents. I think it will be quite worthwhile to watch. Of course, in other news, uh, Wales beat Argentina, won the series there. Argentina, Daniel Horcade, uh, you know, resigned after that, and I think uh, they're going to be looking for a new coach. 
I would hope that the Jaguaris coach, Mario Ledesma, takes that off. He's had some success at Super Rugby level. So it would be interesting, and I think maybe he's the guy to take them forward. But we'll see. That can be interesting to watch. The most interesting thing of that game, though, was Yaku Paper's moustache. Uh, having said that, <laughs> let's move on to some other news as well. Gary Gold had a great win for the USA over Scotland, a one-point win over them. Their first big win over a major, major country as such in world rugby. And hope for their most famous victory in the modern era. Kinghorn chips this one towards the upright. It's his mister. Kinghorn's kick goes to the side. Bullets blows the whistle. The United States have defeated Scotland for the first time in history. 27 years after they lost to the Scottish 15. The number 15 team in the world has knocked off the number 6. And well, the giant has woken up. So well done, Gigi. That's great for you guys. And I hope this goes from strength to strength. We need a strong American side in world rugby if we're going to expand the game. Of course, the uh, France went and won the Under-20 World Championship, and what a side they've got there. Guys are really doing well, and that side's one to watch the future. If they can take that through to French rugby for the, you know, to the senior ranks and play the type of rugby they played in that Under-20 World Championship, that'll really do well for French rugby. I'd love to see them do that, and they've got some great stars in that side as well. But saying that, my moment of the weekend was the try scored by South Africa and their win over New Zealand. It's not often we beat New Zealand in, in many forms of the game, and the 40-30 win for Sean Roo's side was a great finish for the, for the tournament, although there's still question marks about the tactics used by Sean in, in that, in that uh, tournament as well. Lost twice in two years against England, and you would have thought that they, uh, they would have got uh, a bit wiser to the tactics as well. Uh, to me, to me the, this try that you're going to see now is the try that basically summed up it for me. And Wandile, uh, Wandesile Similani, sorry, uh, what a kid and what a, what a ball player. Let's hope we see a lot more of him in the future. Have a watch. Pass to Dubella. They've got some confidence now. Hendricks out to Similani. To the line he goes, breaks through. Nice pass, Lombard. He is quick. He's got players on the inside. Similani. Oh, yes. What a try. <laughs> South Africa go 99 metres. And it's been worth the wait. We'll just shift it to the other touchline. The afterburners from Similani. Ball outside and doing exactly what any centre should do, just tracking up the infield, supporting Lombard. Look at his teammates all over him. Then turning to some other lighter stuff uh, in, in rugby, uh, we of course had a couple of other things that were released on the net as well. We had uh, Land Rover doing a video with Sia Kulisi going back into the township with him uh, to, to Zwede where he grew up and giving his history. What a great ad, guys, and, and what a good worthwhile cause. And Sia, keep giving back, mate. You, you're an inspiration to many. If you're trolling around YouTube, you can do no worse than go to Courtney's Cousin's uh, YouTube page where you'll see daily, di well, not daily, but weekly diaries from the, from the Springbok winger. Uh, at the moment, he's in rehab coming back from a knee injury, serious knee injury, and he's, he gives some quite motivational stuff there as well. So, Courtney, you're doing a great job. Have a look at this little clip from one of the videos. Go to his YouTube page and subscribe as well. I want to share something with you guys, but first, let's listen to this phrase. Dala vadze moet. Oh youngster, weer is wat zit hij? Nee, mijn broer die met zijn met dala wat al een moet. Nee, voor zo mijn broer ik is met jou, mijn broer tot laat brad. Ons praat net die waarheid. Dala vadze moet. Dala vadze moet. Dala vadze moet. Now what does this mean, guys? Like for me, the phrase dala vadze moet translated means do what you have to do. And then uh, the Melbourne Rebels released quite a nice interview uh, there with uh, new cap uh, Jack Maddox and, and, and Will Guinea, the, the, the senior guys. Uh, and it was quite a fun interview. Yes, a brief clip. Go have a look for the full, full version with the clip where the uh, link will be below. One thing we need to address is the uh, post try celebration. Give us a bit of a backstory. What is it? We, so we, we go to Japan and we were like, let's yeah, do something so cool. Well, it was like, let's do a celebration. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he's like, we're doing it. And I was like, 
right. So you big dog did basically. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't that big on it. <laughs> Mate, the reason I came here is because I knew you were going to score. We wanted to do something respectful and because we were going to do something like... Ridiculous, like bad. A, um, a self-sacrifice or something. Oh. Mate, that would work. That was... <laughs> And to finish it off with, uh, that's our last piece this week will be of this epic haka, schools haka in New Zealand. Have a look at this, guys. I'm going to try and play as much of it as I can. Hopefully there won't be a copyright strike against it. This is really great stuff, and, and, and uh, it's great to see schools rugby being supported like this in New Zealand. And occasion. And in the context of the history of New Zealand, the Treaty of Waitangi was signed in 1840. Our first parliament met in 1856. And this wonderful rivalry began in 1896, and what a privilege it is for us to be here today. guys for watching of course all these uh, links are below in the videos so if you want to have a look at them go have a look and you'll see uh, the full versions of these videos support the websites we use here guys we're trying to obviously create a bigger rugby community this is a way of trying to trying to get some of the news that maybe doesn't always get out filtered there to everybody so try and do that and let, let me know what you think of what what topics we've raised here tell me what you think of uh, the news here and if there's something we want us to address tell me as well of course remember the the subscribe link is down below uh, subscribe there to see a lot more rugby videos as well there's a lot going on in this channel at the moment so it'd be always be great and it's always great to hear from you guys as well i really do appreciate the support okay that's it for next week we'll chat again we will have some more rugby rumblings